Hi. So, yesterday, I had something very interesting that happened. It was early in the morning, and I went in to check on my mother, and she was laying on her stomach, which is really not a position I've ever seen her in. Usually, she's on her side. Sometimes, she's on her back. But this time, she was on her stomach. And she was still kind of talking to the TV, which is really odd, but this is what she was doing. And I was under a time crunch. I had to try to get her up. I was hoping to get her into the bathroom. This woman was gonna, going to be coming over to wash her up so that then I could take her to the senior center. But I couldn't move my mother. It's not that I wasn't strong enough to move her, but every time I tried to move her, she grimaced in pain. Oh, that hurts. Oh, your fingers are too hard. Oh, you're twisting my leg like this. Oh, my body hurts and everything. And I'm the son, and <laughs> I will tell you the truth. I've had a past where sometimes I hurt people without realizing it. You know, you just don't sometimes know your own strength. I'm not saying, like, you know, I'm a power lift or anything like that. But, you know, sometimes you just don't gauge how much strength or how much power or whatever you're putting on somebody. So I get this from her all the time. Now, there are a lot of times where I say, I'm not hurting you. I'm barely touching you. But in this case, I was trying to move her entire body, and she just kept saying everything hurt. And I was panicking, and I felt bad. I knew a couple of things I, I was doing were not hurting her. But I just didn't really know what to do. And I was kind of freaking out. And I'm looking at my time schedule saying, oh, geez, what am I going to do? Well, this lady was coming over to wash mom. The thing is, this lady's got a lot of years in working with the elderly and with people with dementia. So she finally shows up. I spent more than 20 minutes trying to get my mother to move. It just wouldn't move and was screaming in pain. So she comes in the house. I said, I'm so glad you're here. Mom is in there. She's just fussing at me with all kind of pain. I can't get her you know, to move. She's on her stomach and I just don't know what to do. Can you help me get her? And she says, I got this. I said, really? You don't need my help? Trust me. I got this. Three minutes. It took her three minutes and mom is walking to the bathroom <laughs> so this lady can clean her. And I'm thinking, what the devil? What could you have possibly done to get this working that I just couldn't figure out? So just as she's leaving, she's cleaned mom up. Mom is all dressed. Now I can put a coat on her and get her going. And I said, what did you do? And she says, I've been doing this a long time. I'm expert at this. I know what's going on. We will talk about it later on. Now, I know part of what the reason is, and I'm not going to go into that because that's not the point of the video. The point of this video is that there are things that people may be expert at that other people aren't. For instance, I'm going to use my healthcare thing. I've mentioned I'm a healthcare finance consultant. There is a specific thing that I am really, really good at that not a lot of people are good at. The reason a lot of people aren't good at is because even though it's one of the most important things in hospital finance, there's very few people who have given it any time to really understand how it works and why it works. So when people are in major difficulties, that's usually when someone reaches out to me and says, hey, such and such a hospital has difficulties. Can you help them out? Or will you work on this project? And then I go in and work on these projects. And, you know, this is not bragging. It's not bragging if you did it. But I helped one hospital in 53 weeks increase their revenue by $790 million. That's in one year. I helped another hospital increase their revenue $240 million in six months. Actually, five months because the first month, I didn't even really get to work with them all that much. So $240 million in five months, and it could have been bigger if they hadn't switched consulting companies and ended my contract. And so this is something that I'm expert at. And there are things that I'm bad at. I think I've mentioned this in the past before. I know nothing about cars. I really don't. I don't know how to change the oil in my car. Or forget that. I don't know how to check the oil <laughs> in my car. Now, I just got a new car, but I didn't know how to check the oil in my other car. No, nothing about it. I knew how to jump the thing. If, if you know, the battery didn't work, I figured that out because I live in central New York. It gets cold. So that I learned. But I don't know how to do anything else. So I go to experts to do these things for me. But 
I can code my websites. I know how to code websites. For years, I built websites for people. These days, no one needs that. They have templates. They work out fine for people. Go for it. But I'm throwing this out there because, one, there are people who are experts at things, and sometimes you just have to be willing to pay the money to let them do that. Two, everybody is an expert at something. And maybe you don't know every single thing about it, but you know more than someone else knows. There's a guy named Brendan Bouchard, and his first book was called The Millionaire Messenger. And one of the things he said was that he became an authority on different things when the need arose. So he talks about when he was 18 years old and his 20-year-old sister needed some dating advice. And he'd never even been on a date, but what he did is he went and he did some research, and he read a lot of books, and then he offered her some advice, and it worked. And then she started telling other people, and the next thing you know, 18-year-old Brendan is a relationship expert for all these girls in college. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I hadn't even been on a date at that point, but because I had read and I'd learned, I knew more than they did about it, and so I was able to offer them advice. Sometimes that's all it takes. You know something. Trust me on this. You know something. I know that I'm good as a healthcare finance consultant in the area of charge master, but that's me. There's other things I'm good at that other people don't know. And so I can call myself an expert. Most of the time I call myself an authority, which means I know a lot, but I don't want to claim expert status. But in this particular instance in healthcare, I will call myself an expert. So what are you expert at? You know, I know there's something out there. And here's my friend Bob, who is probably going to write a goofy comment on this at some point if he watches this. But you know what? He's a great actor. He's been acting for 30, 40 years, and he's been in a lot of productions, and he's gotten a lot of good reviews from people who are fair. <laughs> you just say that because, you know, sometimes actors meet people who just don't like anybody. But he's an expert at acting. He knows how to do that. He could probably direct if someone wanted to give him a chance to do it. So he's an expert at that. Everyone's expert at something. So think about it. What are you an expert at? If you don't want to call yourself an expert, what are you really good at that you can help other people to achieve? That's what I got today. Hope you all have a wonderful day.